We're here today with Professor Judy Klein, who's a professor of economics at Mary Baldwin College in Virginia, and also one of INET's grantees for a really very interesting project called Protocols of War and the Driving Force of Modeling Strategy. Um, welcome, Judy. Thank you. Um, now, so far as I understand, when you say protocols of war, you mean mathematical protocols. Yes. These are applied mathematicians who developed ways to shoot down bombers in World War II. But the, but the sort of overall narrative, as far as I have it, is that you think that those protocols of war then became the substructure of post-war economics in some way. Yes, yes. I think um, each chapter, as I've planned it, is devoted to one particular protocol. Uh, one of the earliest I look at is the um, for the gun sites in the B-17 bombers during World War II. And the mathematical model developed to explain what's happening between the gunner and the gun sight uh, and the analog computer in the turret of the bomber, the cybernetic interactions uh, that allowed the gunner and the computer to forecast to anticipate where the enemy fighter plane would be by the time the bullet hit it. And I follow that from the material origins in World War II to adaptive expectations. In uh, econometric modeling of, yes, of yes. macroeconomics. Right, uh -huh. via Milton Friedman, but also another route uh, that's happening via uh, George Brown and also um, Charles Holt at the Carnegie Institute of Technology mm -hmm. uh, that ends up um, adaptive expectations or in operations research, uh, exponentially weighted moving averages. So you have these two end developments in time series analysis and also in macroeconomic theory for that particular protocol. Mm -hmm. So it's the same math, but it's also the same people in some cases who are bringing these patterns of thought, these ways of thinking about problems from their wartime experience yes. to their in, 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 in the practical problems of war to peacetime experience. So how did you get into this? I was noticing that in the book you wrote before this one, um, which is called Statistical Visions of Time, A History of Time Series Analysis from 1662 to 1938, so that's before the war. Right. The, the story, it seemed to me, um, of that was much more about um, business practice, about mm -hmm. how these pr protocols of business, I guess, mm -hmm. not protocols of war, right. had been the origins of, of practical econometrics. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, and the link between that book and this one is that looking at the material origins in practice. And so what I'm looking at are the the economic history context uh, and the influence of practice and the applied arts mm -hmm. on either statistics or economics. Well, what I noticed uh, in terms of looking at the wartime origins is that so much of this is planning. And as Thomas Schelling argued, economists were hired to practice the science of economizing, the pr to practice the science of economizing. So what you get from this is uh, a high valuation of welfare economics, of normative thinking, and what's also, I think, important, given this practice and applied working for a client, you have to come up with effective numerical solutions. So existence and uniqueness are not sufficient. The, and, there's mathematical niceties right. aren't, aren't that important. And uh, in it's fact, pragmatic, you're saying. Yes, mm -hmm. it is very much pragmatic. There has to be a numerical solution. They need it soon, mm -hmm. um, before the enemy gets it first, if you like. And so what you get is a, uh, a lot of uh, emphasis on approximations and on modeling strategies. Mm -hmm. The ultimate end uh, result of this applied mathematics are these rules of action that the military mm -hmm. wanted. And, and it's that flavor that got into economics, that economics yes. became about a modeling strategy. Uh, in, right, in but way. also you get the whole notion of the 
agent, the representative agent, like in rational expectations models, uh, being seen as a collection of decision rules. Mm -hmm. uh, and even the normative policy prescription being uh, you should have a monetary policy rule. So the rules of action very much come uh, into macroeconomics there. And the modeling strategies designed to yield computational solutions, economists find uh, that they're very effective for uh, eventually uniting macroeconomics with micro foundations mm -hmm. and so forth. But they are modeling strategies. Now, you've always been interested in the, I don't know, quantitative aspects yes. of economics from e even when you were an undergraduate. Mm -hmm. You just, you yes. like statistics and econometrics and missing with data and, and, and so forth. Yes. Um, you were an undergraduate at, um, let me see here, uh, the College of William and Mary. Yes. Um, that's a liberal arts college? Yes. And uh, and you teach now at Mary Baldwin, so that's a liberal arts college. Yes. So <laughs> is am I? I'm I'm making this story here of your life. Is this story right that you that you 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 have stayed in the in the environment in which you were formed? Well, I also taught. Um, yes, in the sense that I have a great appreciation for the liberal arts and the interdisciplinarity that comes from. Uh, that setting. Uh, I think another thing in terms of where I have wanted to teach, uh, I taught for several years at City of London Polytechnic, um, now London Metropolitan University, and that was not a liberal arts institution, but it combined career preparation and that practical data analysis uh, with the teaching of the history of economic thought with economic theory. And I think it's also that combination, and that too at Mary Baldwin, there's a strong emphasis on career preparation. So that in my teaching, I also uh, have an emphasis on practice, particularly uh, data analysis. Yeah. Interesting, so it's an emphasis on practice because of career preparation, mm -hmm. but also because of the liberal arts environment, I yes. guess, an ability to take seriously questions of like the foundations of econometric mm -hmm. analysis, the sort of philosophical bases and things like that. Are you able to teach this stuff to undergraduates? Well, at the moment, what I do is in all my courses, I incorporate some history. So I teach uh, social science statistics, I teach advanced data analysis, and I certainly bring in history. My statistics class starts on the first day or the second day with uh, John Grant's Bills of Mortality in the 16, late 1600s uh, using the merchant's rule, the rule of three. A is to B as C is to D. So he's, the, he's a cloth merchant and he's applying uh, this, his own protocol he uses in selling yards of cloth. Mm -hmm. um, to look at 20 years of data on deaths in London. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and he's appointed uh, to the Royal Society uh, in the early years of that organization. And the king says, if you find any more men of practice like this, we will appoint them. So a merchant is appointed to the Royal Society mm -hmm. uh, there. So in my classes, I, uh, bring history um, into every course, really. I think students um, gain a greater appreciation for the what and the how when they know the when and the why of it as well. This sounds very stimulating, yes. and we're hoping to see this beautiful book, uh, Protocols of War, and we're, we're happy to have you here today and to welcome you to our stable of INET economists. Well, thank you. Thank you very much.